Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the close-up meeting. I'm glad you could join us today. Uh, my name is Chris Belch. I'm the, the moderator of the close-up trip. Um, I've also uh, been teaching social studies here at the park for the last 18 years. And I think almost all of those years I've, I've gone on the close-up trip, I've taken a group of students. Um, I'll share my close-up story in a minute. Uh, but while we're waiting for a few more people to, to enter the, the waiting room, I know there's a, a few people waiting. Um, the one thing that I'm going to send in the chat is just a little sign in form. Um, so just, you know, we're trying to make a list of everybody who showed up and uh, we'll send out kind of a summary of the meeting afterwards. So if you uh, take just a second to fill out the sign up form, um, we're just looking for for name and, and email address just so we can get in contact with anybody that, that may have questions. So I'll give maybe about a minute or two to fill that out. Um, that'll also give a few more people who are signing in a chance to sign in. And then we'll begin with the meeting. So uh, thanks for coming. I'm glad you were able to make it. I'm so excited for this trip. All right. Well, your time is valuable. So I don't, I don't want to take up too much more uh, time waiting for people to, to sign on and whatnot. Um, I want to welcome you to the meeting again for those of you just joining us. Uh, my name is Chris Belch and, and I've been running the close up trip for uh, the past 18 years here at the park. Um, uh, along with me is, is my colleague, Jen Bennett. Um, She's been going on the close-up trip. Uh, I think she went before even I went, and uh, she's been going with me, I don't know, the last three, four, five years, something like that. Um, I'm losing track over all the years, uh, but she'll be chaperoning with me on the close-up trip. Um, she'll be kind of handling the chat, uh, so if you've got questions at any point in time, uh, feel free to either raise your hand, you know, unmute yourself, let me know, or just put something in the chat, and we'd be happy to uh, answer your question and get you the information that you need. Um, otherwise, uh, we're, we're going to kind of roll through basically an overview of the trip and why you should go on the trip, some of the things that we're going to do, and then all the safety stuff that, that people probably want to know a little bit about as well. Um, we are going to click on a number of links throughout the course of the presentation, and I've put them together in one handy document. So I'm going to send that in the, in the chat as well right now. Uh, it's a quick links form. If you click on that, it'll have the links to everything that we're going to go to, including the PowerPoint from today including uh, any of the websites that we're going to go to. It is all on there. Um, I'm also going to give you my email address. If you've got any questions, just send me an email. I'm pretty good at getting back uh, in a, a pretty reasonable amount of time, usually within a day. Um, so if you've got questions, feel free to send me an email. Um, one other thing while we're at important websites, uh, that is the, the Close Up PCEP website. Um, which is tinyurl.com slash closeuppcep. I'm including that in the chat as well. Uh, pretty much everything you want to know about the trip is somewhere on that website. So feel free to check that out as well. Uh, okay. So uh, just a, a quick introduction. Um, when I was in high school, I had a couple teachers who were who were taking this trip to Washington, D.C., and if I'm being honest, I, like I wasn't really into history or government back then. I liked it. I mean, it was kind of cool, but it wasn't my favorite subject. It was like, eh, it's OK. Um, my teacher told us about the trip and, and I wasn't really excited about the trip. Um, in fact, my parents asked if I wanted to go and I said no. Uh, then I found out a bunch of my friends were going to go on the trip. And I decided, well, if they're going on the trip, I guess I'll give it a try. Uh, I went on the trip and I'm so glad I did. It was a transformative experience. It was the coolest thing that I did in four years of high school. I was super involved in my high school. Uh, I, I played sports. I did clubs. I was in National Honor Society, student council. You name it, I did it in my high school. And so for me to say that that was the coolest thing I did in four years of high school, um, it, it, it really is saying a lot about the trip. When I started teaching at Cannes High School, uh, the first thing that I did is I went to my boss and I said, I got this idea for a field trip. Can we do it? And as soon as I ran it by him, he's like, oh, yeah, we've been doing that here for years, but we stopped doing it because it's like way too much paperwork. You don't you don't want to deal with it. And I'm thinking, oh, it can't be that much paperwork. I'm going to do it. It's no big deal. Um, it turns out he was right. It is that much paperwork. Uh, every year I get super stressed out doing the paperwork. Every year my wife tells me I'm not allowed to go again. Uh, and every year I find myself in this position where we're going once more. Um, when I told her that I was holding a meeting tonight, she wasn't really thrilled with me, uh, but that's okay because I think the trip is well worth it. Um, again, I had such a great uh, I had such a great time when I went on the trip when I was in high school. I, I just decided my students have to have this opportunity. I want everybody, Plymouth, Canton, Salem, to have the same opportunity that I did. And, and I think Jen is probably in the same boat as me. Um, we, we both think that this is a hugely valuable trip. And so we are happy to offer it to the students. 
for those of you who don't know anything about Close Up, Close Up has been around forever. Uh, they, they were founded in 1971, so a little over 50 years old. Uh, and in that time, they have graduated. Um, hundreds of thousands of students have been through the Close Up program. It's, it's not just a tour group. Uh, there are plenty of other tour groups out there that offer trips to Washington, D.C. I get calls from them, I don't know, at least three or four times a year. Um, I don't go with any of them because close-up is different. It's not just a tour group. It's not just sightseeing. It's part of a greater experience. Um, close-up is that they've got a vision unlike anybody else. So, well, a lot of tour groups are all about just touring Washington, D.C., Close-Up wants to make you a part of D.C. Their goal is to engage and empower students, to teach students about the government, to get them actively involved in the government, but to do so in a fun way to the point where they don't even realize that they're learning. Um, again, over the years, over 850,000 participants in Close-Up. Um, out of those, many people have gone on to pretty high-level government positions. Um, currently, 10 members of Congress are graduates of the pro the close-up program, uh, two former cabinet members, uh, the former press secretary, uh, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle went on the close-up trip when she was in high school. Um, so there are lots of people who have been on the close-up trip and gone on to do great things in the world. Uh, why should you go on the close-up trip? Reason number one, it's fun. Like, honestly, that is the only reason. That's the only thing that, that I think is really important. Um, but not only is it fun, but, but it is also very beneficial. Um, you can put the Close Up Foundation on a college resume, on a scholarship application. People know what Close Up is. Universities know what Close Up is. They've been around for over 50 years. So when you put Close Up on, people know it's not just a tour group. There is a much greater mission for Close Up. Um, they are all about empowering students. They're about educating students. And this is what I think is the my favorite part of Close Up. It is a highly educational trip, and the students have no idea that they're learning. Um, I know when I got back from Close Up, uh, I had asked my parent. Uh, my parents asked me that age-old question, "What did you learn on the trip? You know, what did you learn while you were in TC?" And I literally, I said nothing. I didn't learn anything. We just went and we had fun, and I told them about all the things that we did. But they were like, "It sounds like you learned stuff." And I'm like, "No, no, no. I didn't learn anything. It was just fun." And and I think that is the that is the greatest part about the Close Up methodology is students are going to learn. They're going to be actively engaged. They're going to be empowered to make a difference in their communities, in the world. And they're doing it all while having a good time, um, all will without even even realizing that they're having fun. Um, one of our students uh, took the time uh, to, to email me. Uh, he went on the trip last year and, and he wanted to let me know a little bit about the trip. He wasn't able to make it today, um, but he wanted me to share this with you. He said the close up trip was an opportunity that I took, which surprised me. As someone who's not really involved in politics, but into traveling, the Washington, D.C. trip offered an experience I would not have been able to receive otherwise. From meeting and connecting with, with new people that I still keep in contact with, learning and expanding my knowledge on government functions, and seeing history unfold right in front of my eyes, I'm confident in saying that this trip is absolutely positively worth going on. I did not go into this trip with any friends, but I came home with people I feel genuine connections with in an experience I'll never forget. Um, I, if that doesn't sell you on the trip, I mean, I don't know what is. Uh, this trip, is, it truly is remarkable. It transforms students' lives. Um, I've taken in my experience, I don't know, three, 400, 500 students over the years. And, and out of all of them, I, I think we've had two students who, who didn't have a good time. One got sick in the trip. I think he was having a great time until he got sick. Uh, the other, well, I don't know, he was just an angry person. Um, but other than that, out of every student I've ever taken, they've all come back with positive experiences, including a number of students who mom and dad thought it would be a good idea to go on the trip, forced them to go on the trip. Students were pretty angry about it. They're like, why do I have to go on this trip? I don't want to go on the trip. And they come back and they are the greatest salespeople for the trip. They're the ones who are saying, I'm so glad I got to go on the trip. I learned, well, they usually don't think about learning. I had so much fun on the trip. Um, thanks for thanks for making me go. Thanks for convincing my parents to send me on the trip. So again, um, just want to share with you the, the close-up website, pretty much everything that we're going to go over. It's on that website somewhere. So tinyurl.com slash close-up PCP. It's also on the click uh, the quick links that I shared in the chat. It's also a, a link that I shared in the chat. So if at any point in time you're like, I forgot that information, it's right on the close-up website. So the first question students and parents always want to know is, when are we going? And the answer is Sunday, February 18th, 
to Friday, February 23rd of 2024. Now, people always wonder why that date, why not go some other time? Um, there, there are a number of reasons. I think that that is the nicest time of the year to go to Washington, D.C. If you go in the summertime, it's way too hot. It's like 90 degrees and high humidity. Um, if you go a little bit later in the spring, like if you go into April, it's super busy. It's super, uh, it's like school group time and, and it gets crazy. You wait in a lot of lines to get in everywhere. But February is beautiful. Um, it's not busy yet, but the weather is usually nice. Um, speaking of the weather, uh, the weather in D.C., the week that we go, somewhere in the mid to high 50s, low 60s, something like that. Um, we've been particularly blessed the last couple of years. Uh, last year when we were in D.C., Canton had the snowstorm. Uh, they had that great ice storm, which, you know, knocked out power for a lot of people. And I think it was like 20 degrees here in Canton. Um, in Washington, D.C., uh, we hit like high 60s, low 70s every day. Um, there were, I think, three days where it was 70, 71 degrees. We were walking around in shorts and T-shirts. It was beautiful. Um, February truly is probably the, the most ideal time of the year to go to Washington, D.C. One of the other advantages of choosing the dates that we've chosen uh, is that it is the week of President's Day. Week. Uh, nothing like celebrating the presidents well in Washington, D.C., um, it also means that we have that Monday of school off. So we already have the day off of school on Monday for President's Day. So that just helps students not miss nearly as much school. Chris, I'm going to flag you here, too. Um, so just sure. so everybody on the call knows, in terms of our schedule for February um, on the district calendar, the students do have the 19th off, which is one of the days we'd be gone um, to D.C., and then they would get school business for the remaining four days of that week. But I also want everyone to know that Friday, February 16th is also a non-school day because teachers have professional development that day. So students are done with school on Thursday, the 15th. So they have that that two day, two flex days, really, that Friday and that Saturday before we go on the trip. If they wanted to work ahead on any schoolwork that teachers might have for them. Um, so it's less of an inconvenience to be gone for those four days um, while everyone else is in school. So they've got a little bit of time to prepare ahead um, so that they don't feel as overwhelmed. And then of course they'd have internet connectivity if they wanted to do anything on the trip or at the airport or whatever the case may be. So I just want to let everybody know that that day um, is off for students as well. Thank you. That's that's an excellent point. Um, uh, one of the th questions that, that usually comes up and since we're on it, we'll, we'll just bring that up right now um, is what about the, the work that students are going to miss? Uh, anybody who knows me knows that I very, very, very rarely miss school. Um, I very rarely advocate for students being out of class. And I think this trip is so worthwhile. Um, it, it's something where, you know, four days, it's something that, that I definitely think students can, can miss a few days of school for. Uh, I know from my classes personally, and I can only handle students in my class, uh, I excuse all the work that they're going to miss. Um, you know, they still need to know the content for the test, but uh, I, I excuse all the assignments from the week. Other teachers handle it differently, but one thing that we've learned over the years, students are more than, uh, teachers are more than flexible in working with the students, especially since we know so far ahead of time when we're going to be gone, when we're going to be out. Um, I always ask students after, you know, was it, was it a big deal to make up the work you missed? Were you super stressed out afterwards? And almost all students say, no, nah, not really. Um, they were, they're, they're always able to adequately prepare and teachers are pretty flexible with the, the makeup work afterwards. All right, so a little bit about the accommodations, a little bit about once we get to D.C., some of the things that we're going to do. Um, first of all, we're going to fly to Washington, D.C. Uh, I don't want to be on a bus for 12 hours. I don't think anybody else does either. And honestly, with the cost of getting a bus, it's not that much more expensive to fly. Um, in some cases, it's actually cheaper to fly than to take a bus. One of the other advantages of flying is that we usually, so close up, the official program begins on Sunday evening. We're going to try to get uh, probably a, a late morning flight out so we can get in there a little bit early, have the whole day on Sunday to kind of explore D.C., do some things that the students want to do. We call that a free day. Um, we'll be with the students the whole time, but we let them choose what they want to do, the, the places that they want to go. And the same thing for Friday. So the official program ends Friday after breakfast, uh, but we'll usually try to get a pretty late flight out on Friday evening. That way we've got the whole day on Friday to do more things as well. Um, so we're, we're, we don't know the exact flight yet. It just kind of depends on how many people sign up for the trip. But usually we fly out uh, late Sunday morning and we try to get back late Friday evening. Um, hotels vary by year. Again, they, they haven't booked it yet. We're still kind of waiting on that. 
Um, but uh, when when I was in in high school, uh, when we went on the close-up trip, we stayed at the Holiday Inn on 13th and K. It's not there anymore. Um, it was not a very good hotel. It was pretty shady. Um, it, it was not the kind of place you want to stay. And it turns out that students don't like staying in, in dirty, shady hotels. Neither do parents or uh, teachers. And so Close Up now has adopted, uh, probably 20 years ago, uh, the policy that they, they always try to pick at least a three-star hotel, usually four or, well, I've never seen a five-star hotel on Close Up, but they're usually four-star hotels. Um, some of the hotels that we've used the last couple of years, uh, the Hyatt in Crystal City, which is an absolutely beautiful hotel. It's a four star hotel. Uh, we stayed at the Crown Plaza. I think that might have been last year. We stayed at the Hilton. We stayed at the Marriott. They're always really nice hotels, really clean hotels, usually a four star hotel. And usually they're either in Alexandria, Virginia um, or uh, Crystal City, Virginia. So just a, a tick outside of D.C., um, beautiful hotels, nice, safe areas. Uh, so that's that's one of the reasons why we uh, choose some of those hotels. Uh, the other thing uh, people are probably wondering, like, so who do my students room with? Uh, they get to room with their 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 the roommates of their choice, um, guys with guys, girls with girls, and the roommates are chosen by the students. So I think this year uh, they're going to have uh, the students from our school are going to be you know just with students from our school. Students from other schools are just going to be with students from other schools, and and then we'll all meet. Um, for program. By the way, that's one of the, the, the highlights for me, the selling points of Close Up, is it's not just our school. It's not just our district that's going. Uh, there are schools from all across the country that go on the Close Up trip. Um, so there, there's going to be schools from California and Florida and Arkansas and Louisiana and you name it. There's going to be schools from all across the country there. And this gives the students an opportunity to meet people from across the country, get to know people from across the country, make friendships from across the country. Uh, I know when I went on the close up trip, when I was a senior in high school, um, I met some some people from Boston. And when I went to Boston a couple of years ago, I actually flew down a couple of days early. Uh, I stayed with one of my close up friends and. Uh, his wife, they, they uh, let me stay at their house for a couple of days. They took me around town. So you really, truly do make lifelong friendships. Um, I know last year with the close-up trip, uh, one of the things close-up has tried to do in the past, and it worked quite well, is having students from our school room with students from other schools. Um, in I guess, you know, in, in the wake of COVID and and sort of in the aftermath of COVID, they've, they've decided, I think, uh, it's just going to be students from our school rooming with each other. Um, if... It is necessary to room with somebody from another school. Um, we'll let you know ahead of time, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, students get to pick their roommates. Um, the other thing about the accommodations is the food is really good. Uh, most of the time they're taking students to restaurants. Um, all the meals are included with the trip. Um, sometimes students may, you know, if you want to eat a lot, um, meals can get a little pricey in Washington, D.C. So you might have to pack a little extra cash if you, you want a larger meal. Um, but for the most part, all meals are are included, and it's usually fantastic food. All right, somebody's got their hand up. Hi, I have my hand up. This is Wendy Duran. Um, Hi. I'm just, when you say with their school, is this the Plymouth Canton School District? So Plymouth, Salem, Canton, so they can room with another student from Salem if Madison's currently at Canton? Yep, exactly. Uh, so okay. anybody from PCEP, yeah, we, we okay. I mean, we call it school because we're so unique and we're the, we're the only people who have three schools in one school. But yeah, anybody from Plymouth, Canton, Salem, uh, they can room with each other. Thank you. That was an excellent question. Thank you. Um, I know if I were a parent, uh, I would be worried about supervision. So, uh, you know, are my students going to be safe while they're on the trip? And the answer is yes. Uh, students will be under some supervision at all times while on the trip. Um, as far as teachers go, for every 10 to 15 students we take, we're going to take uh, at least one teacher. Uh, Miss Bennett and I will be for sure going, so we'll have one male chaperone, one female chaperone. Um, we're hoping if our turnout this year is anything like the last few years, we'll be able to take a third, maybe even a fourth teacher. Um, so we've got Mr. Vera Burgos. He's lined up. Uh, um, if we hit about 25 or so students, he's probably going to go on the trip with us. So you're always going to have PCP. Uh, teachers on the trip. Um, on top of that, what I think is really unique about Close Up is there are program instructors that, that are from the Close Up organization, Close Up Foundation, and they really run the students through the, uh, through the program. They are highly trained. They're all college educated. 
uh, usually related fields, history, government, English, humanities, stuff like that. Um, and they all undergo a very extensive training program. So before they're allowed to work with students, um, they have an FBI background check run on them. And then they spend about four to five weeks training before they're ever off uh, alone with students. And even then, they're never really alone because there are multiple pro program instructors uh, that, that are there together to, um, to, to lead the students through the week in Washington, D.C. Uh, the students are going to spend about half the time with Ms. Bennett and I. Um, so that's mainly on Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, the rest of the time, they're usually off with the close-up program instructors, and, and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. As far as safety goes, uh, all students will have our contact information. Um, I'll have my phone on me at all times, so if, if parents need to get a hold of me, if students need to get a hold of me, uh, same with Ms. Bennett, uh, we always carry our phones with us so you can get a hold of us at any point in time. Um, other things that apply, I mean, all school rules apply. I think that's a given for a school field trip. Um, and then the the other thing that the school district does, uh, the other thing that Close Up does is students will get a badge. Um, they'll have a name badge. It's got their name on it. And on there, they've also got the Close Up phone number, which is a toll-free number 24-7. They've always got somebody staffing that number. Uh, so if the students somehow manage to get separated from the group, which knock on wood has not happened yet, um, but if they do get separated, they can always either call Ms. Bennett or I, we'll get a hold of somebody, um, or they can call the close-up number and they've got somebody who will get a hold of somebody on the trip right away. So somebody is always answering that number. Um, we mentioned before, guys with guys, girls with girls, as far as bedrooms go, and close-up has a very strict no guys and girls rooms, no girls and guys rooms rule. Uh, and they define that as the threshold of the door. Uh, it's one of the cardinal rules that close-up has, one foot in the door of somebody of the opposite gender, and you're on the next flight home. So they do take safety and security very seriously. Um, in addition to that, close-up pays uh, night monitors to, uh, they, they'll usually get a block of rooms in the same hall of the hotel, and they have somebody who sits in the hotel hallway all night long, uh, just kind of looking at the doors and, and making sure uh, nobody sneaks out um, or, but probably more than, than worrying about sneak people sneaking out. If somebody needs something in the middle of the night, if, if they need an extra towel or an extra pillow, or I don't know, if there's some kind of emergency, uh, they can come see the night monitors. So well, students are doing the student program, um, again, uh, students will be off with, with the close-up program instructors for about half of the trip. Um, Ms. Bennett and I, we will be with the students on Sunday and Friday mostly. Um, we'll be with them almost the whole day on Sunday and Friday. And we get to take them through Capitol Hill Day, which is Wednesday. It's my favorite day of the trip. That's where we're going to meet members of Congress and get a bunch of behind the scenes tours. Um, so, so that's the day that we spend the most time with the students. Um, other than that, uh, uh, the teachers, if you're wondering, well, what are we doing while students are doing their thing? Uh, the, the teachers will be going to various different workshops. We have seminars. We go off and do professional development while students are doing um, their version of the close-up trip. So what will students do? Um, the first thing that I will say is that we can't promise anything. We can't promise everything. The trip varies year by year, um, but there is a general itinerary. There is sort of a, a, a sample schedule that that close up follows every year. And I'm going to put that uh, a couple links to this because I know the, the print is small. Um, so you can take a, a closer look at some of the things that students might typically do in any given year. Um, but again, every the, they, they're always making adjustments, always changing the program. There's always something new every year. Um, so, you know, if, if there's one thing on here and that's the only reason you're going on the trip, you probably don't want to go on the trip. Um, but you do want to go because there's so many other things. Uh, it, it's going to be a good time. So again, I can't promise that we're going to do everything on here. In fact, there, there are too many things on here to try to do everything. Um, but this is just a, a kind of a little bit of a, a sampling of some of the things that we've done in the past and things that we can do again. Um, for a lot of the trip, we let the students decide, especially on Sunday and Friday when we're with the students, um, we, we let the students decide what they want to do. And we just kind of roll with that. Uh, I, I've been to DC like 20 some odd times. Um, I know my way around town, uh, which is helpful because that means I can lead the students. Same with Miss Bennett. She's been dozens of times. Um, but then the other half of that that's really cool is, I mean, we've done the stuff. Um, we're here not for us, but to do what the students want to do. 
So much like any trip to Washington, D.C., we'll hit up all the major monuments, the the Washington Monument, the 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 FDR Mon Memorial, the Teddy Roosevelt Memorial. Um, we're going to hit up Lincoln and Jefferson. We're going to do all the major monuments. That's that's part of any kind of trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, we will visit Arlington National Cemetery in the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Uh, we will also visit the September 11th Monument uh, at the Pentagon. Uh, we will visit the MLK Memorial. We're going to visit all of the war memorials, so World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam. I don't even have World War One on there. It just opened last year. It's really cool. Um, so we'll definitely stop by that one. Um, other things, some of the other ones, uh, the Air Force Memorial, the Iwo Jima Memorial. Um, Close Up does a really good job of finding all the major war memorials in, in presidential monuments. Um, but we'll also go to some of the lesser known ones. And I don't want to spoil it because that's, that's kind of Close Up surprise. Uh, as far as museums go, um, the number one thing that people think of when they think Washington, D.C. is the Smithsonian. Uh, there are over 19 museums in the Smithsonian Institute. 17 of them are in Washington, D.C. We're not going to be able to make it to all 19 of them. Um, but some of the ones that we've, we've typically highlighted in years past, uh, we go to the Smithsonian Castle. That's the one that you see in National Treasure in the movie. Um, modern, modern American history is usually really popular with the students. They just redid that one. It is fantastic. Um, the Museum of African American History, which is the newest one. Um, honestly, it's so cool. It, I, I've been, I think it's been open four or five years now, and I still haven't seen everything there is to see there. It is, it is fantastic. Um, the Natural History Museum, I'm not a big fan. I, I don't like it but students love it. So we end up going there every year because it's not about me, it's about them. Uh, Air and Space, they just finished redoing that one. Um, so those are some of the, the, the more popular ones that students like to go to. Um, there are some lesser known ones. Maybe we'll pop in the portrait gallery. That's really cool if you see it. Uh, there are some of the art museums that students like to go to. So we really just let students uh, make that choice. Um, we'll go to the National Archives. We'll see the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Um, we will also go to the Holocaust Museum, which is, I think, probably the most well-done museum in Washington, D.C. Um, I don't like going there because it is incredibly sad. And as a grown man, I don't like to be on the verge of tears, uh, especially on a fun trip to Washington, D.C. But I, I do think it is something that is so important that students see. And it really is one of the, the most well-developed museums in Washington, D.C. Um, but, you know, one of the things I told you at the beginning is this is not just a sightseeing tour. We're not just going to look at monuments. Um, you, you can do that in a family trip. You can do that on your own. Uh, one of the things that I think is really unique about Close Up is it brings not only students from around the country together, so students can meet people from around the country, but they also, Close Up has behind the scenes connections. They bring in a lot of Washington, D.C. insiders. Um, I remember when John Kerry was running for president, we, we got to meet him uh, when we were in the Capitol. And, and that was, you know, an experience that students have. Um, personally, I've never met the president. Um, usually, probably once a year, they try to get the president in. Sometimes the president says, yes, most of the time president's kind of off doing presidential things. Um, but I, I, I keep holding out that one of these years, we're going to get to meet the president. Um, but even if we, we only need a cardboard cut out of the president, there's still the opportunity to meet a lot of movers and shakers in Washington, D.C. Close up will bring in journalists. They'll bring in members of nonprofit organizations. They'll bring in the movers and shakers of Washington, D.C. Uh, we had one of the assistant directors of the FBI a couple years ago. We had a member of the National Security uh, Administration there. I mean, there are all kinds of really cool Washington insiders that Close Up brings in to work with the students, talk with the students. Um, be part of the trip with the students. Uh, close up in the evening, instead of just kind of hanging out in the hotel doing nothing, uh, close up has set up a series of debates. So the first night that they're there is my favorite debate. They they do a liberal conservative debate. Um, they bring in uh, two well known prominent liberals and conservatives from Washington D.C. They let them debate each other. Um, they'll bring up issues and they ask the students to play an active role. Um, I, I'm always amazed at how uh, how excited students get, how worked up students get. Um, they give students a piece of paper, uh, and if you agree with the speaker, you hold up a, red, a green sheet of paper. If you disagree, you hold up a green sheet of paper. Uh, disagree, you hold up red. And and students, they you know they're always yelling and screaming, and it's really cool because the 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 debaters are usually pretty funny. Um, other things that close up will run. Uh, one night they do a domestic policy debate. Another day they address a foreign policy issue, 
And then on uh, a third day that they're there, they do a mock Congress. And so they let the students pick the issues. So whatever is kind of relevant and current in the news. Um, I think some of the ones that they did uh, last year, there was a, a gun control, gun rights debate. Um, they looked at immigration. So they pick hot button issues that are important to students. There also is some free time for students to, to kind of relax. Uh, so every night students will have some time on their own in the hotel. Uh, they can go back to their room. They can get an early night's sleep if they want. They can call mom and dad if they want to check in. Um, they can hang out with their friends. There's usually uh, a couple rooms that close up will set aside, uh, a couple meeting rooms where students can meet and just kind of hang out, play games, talk, whatever they want to do um, uh, each night. And so that's also a popular option. So there will always, of course, be supervision in the hallways and the in the meeting rooms. Um, but there's there's some free time. There's some downtime every night where Students can relax, they can work on homework, they can hang out with their new friends. Um, so there's there's plenty of things to do that night. Close up also does uh, usually one night they do, they call it night on the town. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the theater, we'll see a play in Washington, DC. Um, usually it's a comedy, usually it's really funny, usually it's really well done. Uh, you know, it, it, it I just love it. Um, a close up is pretty good at knowing sort of the 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 awesome plays and and what's going on in DC. Uh, so we'll we'll go see a play and then after we do the play, uh, there's usually a trip around Washington DC, a couple uh, night monument sightseeing tours, and then on the last night that we're there, uh, so on Thursday night there's a farewell dinner and dance. Um, so a little bit nicer dinner. Students get all dressed up. They have a really great dinner. And afterwards, if students want to take advantage of it, there's a dance. Um, if you don't want to dance, if that's not your thing, don't worry. There's still free time um, in, in some of the there's another room set up where you don't have to go to the dance or you can go back to your hotel room. We also try to set up behind the scenes tours. So uh, we've been very fortunate the last couple of years to get tours of the White House. We're trying to set that up again. Um, if you've never been to the White House, it's super cool to get to go to inside. And that's something that the general public can't do. Um, in years past, we set up an FBI tour. We've done a Secret Service tour, a Pentagon tour. Uh, that just kind of depends on the availability and, and some of my connections and Ms. Bennett's connections and seeing if we can make those things happen. But we try to set up some behind the scenes tours. Sometimes students visit embassies. They get to meet ambassadors and, and representatives from different countries. Uh, I think one of the coolest things about Close Up is they do a neighborhood visit. So they'll take students to some of the lesser known neighborhoods in Washington, D.C. Um, they'll, they'll hang out in Chinatown or they'll go to the U Street neighborhood, which is uh, uh, the traditionally African-American section of Washington, D.C. Um, it is now the most up and coming part of Washington, D.C. Like it's the hot place. It's the place that people want to be. Uh, of course, Georgetown is maybe the, the most famous city inside of a city in Washington, D.C., um, and so students will get the opportunity to explore those neighborhoods and see a little bit of culture that you probably don't see on your family vacation. Um, we try to set up stuff like uh, the movie National Treasure. Uh, we try to visit some of the sites from the movie. Um, maybe they'll show us the secret map on the, the back of the Declaration of Independence. Um, sometimes we've been able to get into the Watergate building, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing to watch money being made. I mean, these are all things that we do on the trip. Uh, my favorite day is Capitol Hill Day. On Capitol Hill Day, we do just that. We go to Capitol Hill. We'll get a private tour of the Capitol. Um, we will visit the Supreme Court. And then probably my favorite part of the day, we have legislative meetings. We will either meet with our members of Congress or usually somebody from their staff. Uh, I know when we were there last year, uh, the members of Congress were all out for a break that week. Um, they were back in, in Michigan doing their work. But we got to meet the chief of staff. Um, and that that's pretty remarkable. Uh, I, I think usually the chief of staff is probably making more decisions than the actual member of Congress. So that was pretty cool that, that they took time out of their days to meet with the students. Um, again, we'll also get some behind the scenes tours uh, of, of Capitol Hill. We'll, we'll visit offices, we'll visit committee rooms, we'll get a tour of the Capitol. Um, they've been able to get the students uh, uh, to take the secret uh, train ride underneath the, the Capitol building that goes from the office buildings to the US Capitol. Um, again, I, I can't promise everything, but you know we're we're usually pretty good at doing that. Um, we'll get the students' gallery passes so we can go see the House and the Senate galleries. Miss um, Bennett's favorite part is we'll get to go to the Supreme Court, um, and if we're really lucky, they'll be doing oral arguments the day we're there, and we'll get to check out the the oral arguments. Um, one of my favorite things to do in D.C. is to go to the Library of Congress. I'm not just saying that because my wife is a librarian. The 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 building is fantastic and 
It is, there's, there's usually a traveling exhibit there. There's an old map exhibit there. It is, it's one of those ones where students are like, why are we going to the library? And then they get there and they're like, oh, this is why, this is really cool. Um, and then again, uh, we, we let the students choose what we're doing on, on a lot of the free time. Um, if there's a sporting event in town, whether it's a Capitals game or a Wizards game, um, ice skating in the uh, National Mall, um, if we've got time, we can make that happen. Uh, that will usually be an additional cost, um, but you don't have to go. So, you know, if you're like, man, I don't want to spend extra money to go see a hockey game, that's fine. Um, so that's something, that's an option for, for students who are interested. Um, the art galleries, the National Gallery of Art and the various Smithsonian's, those are usually pretty popular. Um, the International Spy Museum is really cool. They, they just opened a new one. Um, the Museum of Crime and Punishment, Ford's Theater, where Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Uh, there are a number of religious organizations sometimes students want to go to, uh, whether it's the National Cathedral, the Basilica of the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, uh, the, uh, the Islamic Center in Mosque of Washington, D.C., the 13th and I Historic Synagogue. These are all places where we've been able to take students. Um, so it, it really is a pretty unique trip and that students get to do pretty much whatever they want. Um, we, we base the, the trip around the students. Now, the big question, um, and, and I know this is the moment that everybody's been waiting for and dreading at the same time, um, what is the cost of the trip? And so the first thing that I have to say is that the trip is all inclusive. Uh, it includes the airline flight. It includes almost every meal. I'll tell you which ones are not included. Um, it includes uh, admission to all the attractions. It includes everything. It includes the hotel. And you can't book a, a family trip to Washington, D.C. For, for this price. Um, so the overall price of the trip is $1,917, which is going, uh, I'm sorry, $1,982. I'm sorry, I forgot to update that. Um, $1,982 going to the Close-Up Foundation. And then uh, PCEP has us charge a trip fee, which covers some other things which Close-Up doesn't. So um, the, the trip fee pays for a t-shirt for all the students. Uh, it also includes... Uh, um, the Metro card. So to ride the subway, most of the time we're in DC, we're being taken around by private charter buses. Uh, so close up, we'll charter a bus the whole time, but on that Sunday, when we first get there and on that Friday, when we're leaving, um, uh, because we're going to be there before the official program starts, uh, we will take the subway. We will take the Metro. Um, and so we pay for the Metro card for those days. Um, there are some other little expenses that are involved. Uh, so like we're going to be out of school and unfortunately the school district, uh, has the students, the, the parents, you have to pay for the subs for Ms. Bennett and I to, to not be there. I've asked if I can just use my sick days for it. Um, I've got a lot of them because I very rarely miss, knock on wood. Um, the, the school said no to that. So unfortunately, we do have to pay for that cost. So uh, there are some costs associated with the trip fee. The good news is the more students who go on the trip, the cheaper it is. Um, so I, I ran all the numbers based on 15 students going. Um, which I think, you know, that's hopefully a low estimate. Um, we've already got, I think, four or five people signed up who have already paid the deposit for the trip. Um, we did one of these meetings in, in the fall and in the, the springtime. Um, I think 15 is, is probably hopefully on the low end. Uh, last year, we had 28 students go, 29 students go, something like that. Um, so, you know, the more students you go, the more that price goes down. Um, the, the cost, again, it's an all-inclusive cost. The only thing extra that you'll have to pay for, um, a couple meals on those free days, so before the official program starts. So if you want breakfast in the airport in the morning, if you want lunch once we land on Sunday, uh, those are meals that students have to pay for. On Friday, sometimes close-up pays for lunch, sometimes they don't. It's kind of been up in the air. Um, so if close-up doesn't pay for lunch on Friday, that's something students will have to buy on their own. And then dinner in the airport on Friday, that's something they'll have to pay for on their own. Um, other than that, uh, you know, maybe budget a little bit more for food on, on the days where students are eating in restaurants. Um, I know close up, they give a fair uh, amount of money to, to get food, but sometimes students like to buy more. And so if that's the case, maybe a little bit extra for meals. But for the most part, it's all inclusive. Uh, the only other thing to pay for on the trip, uh, souvenirs. Um, and then any tours that we go to on the free day. So on Friday and on Sunday. Um, and even those, we will always have a free option. So like if you want to go to the International Spy Museum, it's $20 to get in. 
If you don't want to go, there'll be another teacher who goes somewhere for free. So uh, don't feel like you have to do any of those. But if you do choose to go to a paid museum on, on the free days, um, that's an additional cost. And then checked luggage. Um, depending on the flight, you know, if we fly Southwest, luggage is free, checked luggage. Usually we end up flying Delta. So if you want to check baggage, you got to pay for it. I know I'm not very good at packing very concisely. Um, I'm always paying for check luggage. I want to say probably two thirds of the students had everything in a carry on and that's all they needed. So if you can fit everything into a carry on, um, that's that's fine. Travel insurance. Um, hey, Chris, I, can I flag you oh, real quick? Yep, Go ahead. Um, so coming back to the checked baggage, I think it was thirty dollars if memory serves for the flight there and then 30 bucks mm -hmm. for the flight home on Delta. And then I had a direct question come in regarding a couple, actually, um, one of them okay. I know you're getting to, but regarding the food options. Remind me, because I can't, rec I don't recall, um, does Close Up offer like dietary options? They're they're asking specifically um, if there would be halal options available for them. Um, I don't remember if there was vegan options. Mm -hmm. um, has Close Up shared that with us yet? I know for sure that there are vegetarian options. There's vegan options. They, they always have something that meets that. I am about 99% sure that there are halal meals available. Um, I want to say that we got this question asked, answered a couple years ago. Um, I know we've had Muslim students go on the trip, so that that's nothing new. Um, so I want to say that halal meals and kosher meals are available. Um, we might want to, I, I think we might have to let them know ahead of time. Um, but definitely, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to get a hold of my rep, but I, I will make it happen. I mean, if, if that is the thing that you're worried about is meals, uh, we will find some restaurant in DC that they can get a halal meal or a kosher meal or any other kind of special dietary restrictions. Um, I know usually as long as close up knows about it with enough advance notice, they can usually work around uh, uh, food allergies and, and various dietary restrictions. Um, the other thing is a lot of the time students are kind of on, I don't want to say on their own, but they'll, they'll go to a food court and say, here's a bunch of different options, find something that, that you like. Um, definitely in most of the, the, the major places where they're taking students um, and where, where those food court options are available, you're going to find halal meals, you're going to find kosher meals. Um, and I want to say that when they have the catered meals that come to the hotel, um, there, there, I know there's always a vegetarian vegan option. I'm, I'll check for sure. Um, but we'll, we'll find a way to, to get appropriate food for people who have restrictions. Thank you. Okay. I, I've made a note so we can put together mm -hmm. a list for our representative. Okay. Yeah. Was that it? Oh, you're going to get to something about payment in terms of when all the payments are due. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that one's coming. Yeah. That um, one's another. Coming. Another question regarding um, going to an Islamic mosque in DC um, mm -hmm. to attend the prayer on Friday. Um, would that be something that students are allowed to do with a chaperone? Um, questions regarding if we need additional chaperones outside of the teachers and gluten-free meals. Um, so I'm going to add that to the list. So those are the yeah. lists I've seen in chat uh, directly okay. to me. I'm pretty sure we can do gluten-free meals. Um, I, I'm almost positive that that's an option. We'll find a way to make it happen. Um, I'm pretty sure Close Up offers it. I mean, you know, this is a big organization. They're bringing in hundreds of thousands of students every year. I'm, I'm almost certain that we can make that happen. Um, and if not, I'll find a way to make it happen. Uh, as far as visiting the mosque on Friday, um, so there's a fairly good chance. I, so here's the thing. I don't promise anything to anybody about anything because it just kind of depends on the flow of the day, depending on when our flights are in and out. Um, some of the other things, like usually on the free day, that's when we do the White House tour and we're kind of at the mercy of the White House on that one. Um, but if we can fit it into the schedule um, and if there is enough student interest and, and by enough, there'd have to be like two. Um, uh, generally speaking, uh, neither Miss Bennett or I are going to go anywhere alone with a student um, for various different safety reasons and obvious reasons. Um, but if, if there's a group of students who are interested in going and we can find a way to make it happen. Um, we'll, we'll definitely make that happen. So uh, I want to say chances are fairly good, um, but just like everything, I, I never like to promise anything because it just depends on circumstances. But yeah, I think uh, uh, being able to go to the mosque or the synagogue or the basilica or the, the, the national cathedral, those are all sites that um, if we've got enough students who are interested or you know we've got a few students who are interested, um, we can usually make that happen.
Okay, I think that was all of them, right? There was the question regarding um, chaperones. So oh, chaperones. Do we, need, do we need chaperones? Yeah. Um. So this is this is where the trip the, the 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 trip gets a little tricky as far as chaperones go. So. Um, we we have always gone with social studies teachers as being the the primary chaperones. Miss um, Bennett and I have always been, or you know, whatever other teacher has gone with us, have always been the chaperones. Um, that is the school's preferred method of chaperones for the trip, um, just because of some of the liability issues and and we are out of town and and whatnot. Um, now, if parents want to go on the trip, um, it it is possible. Uh, parents can go on the trip. Parents are welcome to chaperone. Uh, but a couple of things about parent chaperones. Um, number one, you'd have to pay for the trip on your own, and I can run the numbers and, and find out what that is. Um, but any parent chaperone would have to pay. And also be aware, because of the nature of the trip, because the, the fact that there's, there's sort of the student side of the trip and there's the teacher side of the trip, um, any parent who goes, uh, you can tag along on the student side of the trip. Um, you know, parents have done it in the past. You're going to be in the the, the minority on that one. Um, there, there's not a lot of parents who usually tag along on the parent side of the trip. Um, usually from some of the other schools, maybe there's uh, on the student side, there's usually maybe one or two parents who, who kind of end up doing that. Um, then there's the teacher side of the trip, which, of course, if you want to go as a chaperone, you're, you're more than welcome to come on the teacher side of the trip. Um, but what gets tricky is, it, you know, it is kind of teacher geared stuff. Um, they are teacher geared sites and workshops and speakers. So I would say that if you're interested in going as a parent, um, maybe stick around at the end of the meeting and we can talk a little bit more. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not going to say no. Uh, that that's certainly up to you. Um, but but it is something that you know we've we've got some feedback from parents in years past uh, who have gone on the trip and um, you know we'll talk after. All right, um, travel insurance. Uh, Travel insurance is just like any other kind of insurance. It's a gamble. Um, you know, it, nobody thinks that they're going to need it until you need it. Um, but if you don't need it, then it ends up being money that you've spent that, uh, you know, that you probably didn't have to spend. And, and so I, I don't ever make a recommendation one way or another. Um, you know, that's completely up to you. I will say that once you put a deposit down on the trip, um, the, the deposits and the, the fees uh, for the trip, they're non-refundable fees. So, uh, you know, if something does come up last minute, if somebody gets sick last minute, close up will try to work with us to reschedule the trip, um, to try to get the student to go another time, but, uh, they, they don't give refunds. So I would say that, you know, if you want to take a risk and prevent your, uh, uh prevent, uh, um, losing everything, if something does happen to a student, um, you may, may want to buy travel insurance. That's completely up to you. When you register for the close-up trip, um, you're going to sign up, and I'll get there in a, in, a, in a few minutes. You'll sign up with us. We'll give you a password for the close-up site. Once you register with close-up, they'll give you the option to buy from the, the company that they work with. Um, there are also tons of places online. I don't make any recommendations about what's good, bad. I, I don't know. Um, I personally do not buy travel insurance for my trip, um, but that's that's just me. It's it's a risk I'm I'm willing to take, I guess. Um, but if, if you do want to buy travel insurance, you can find stuff. It seems like everybody on the internet is offering our close up rep told us last year, a lot of insurance companies offer it, some credit card companies offer it. So just something you might want to think about now fundraising for the trip. Um, I, I think for a week in Washington, DC, uh, you know, about $2,000, uh, is a, is a pretty good deal. Uh, I, I think that, for what Close Up is doing, I would be hard pressed to be able to plan a family trip for under what they're doing. And, and I know my way around DC pretty well. Um, that being said, I know that that can be a substantial amount of money for some families. And we've, we've got people from a variety of different backgrounds who, who wanna pay for the trip. I don't want funding to become an issue for anybody. Um, there are a number of ways where we can try to make things happen. And the first thing is through fundraising. Um, I will say that I myself do not run or coordinate any fundraisers. And the reason for that is just simply put, I don't have enough time. Um, running this trip in and of itself, just doing all the paperwork that I've got to do, it's like a full-time job for me on top of my full-time job. Um, I can't tell you how many hours a week, every week are spent coordinating and planning and getting stuff ready for the close-up trip. And so if I'm, I'm being honest, there's only so many hours in the day, um, I, I can't set things up on my own. 
Um, that being said, if a, a couple parents want to take the lead and they want to choose from some of the fundraising options and get it set up, I would be happy to coordinate. I'd be happy to be the in-between. I'd be happy to utilize the email list to spread the ideas. Um, we might even be able to get a small stipend your way if you're coordinating enough fundraisers. Um, but there, there are tons of fundraising ideas on our fundraising site. I would encourage you to take a look at that and uh, take a look at the site. And again, I put the link in the, the chat. Um, see if there's any options there that, that appeal to you. I will say that one of the easiest ways to pay for your trip, and this is really, really important, um, is what is called matching funds. Close Up is a nonprofit organization. Um, they are a 401c3 nonprofit. And many businesses, many corporations, uh, if you work for their corporation, they will do matching funds on a donation to a nonprofit organization. What that means is if you donate money to Close Up, they will donate money to Close Up. Um, so what Close Up is able to do, um, and if you want to take advantage of matching funds, um, a couple caveats. Number one, you can't match the PCB Close Up fund. Um, that's something that you'll have to pay in full. You also can't match the initial five hundred, the initial five hundred dollar deposit. That is something that has to be paid in full. But the remaining cost of the trip, if you pay half and your corporation will do matching funds, um, then the corporation will pay the other half. If you want to take advantage of this, and I highly encourage you do, um, I think there were three, four, five families that did this last year. You can literally pay for almost half of your trip. Um, but if you're going to do this, definitely send me an email first, and I'll go over the particulars on how how we've got to set up the account to do this. Because essentially what happens is you make a donation to Close Up, company makes a donation to Close Up, and then Close Up asks you, what do you want to do with that donation? And then we're just going to, uh, we're going to, uh, you're going to donate it to, um, you know, whoever you want on the trip, probably your son or daughter, student, something like that. Um, so we'll, we'll make that work. Uh, again, there's, there's a website on our fundraising site or it's closeup.pcepcloseup.com um, slash matching. Um, and that will explain the process in a little bit more detail. I highly encourage you um, to check with your employer uh, to see if they offer matching funds to a 501c3 nonprofit, um, or maybe talk to brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, find somebody who works for a company that does matching funds. This is a great way to get half of the cost of your trip paid for. Um, we're also willing to sell sponsorship packages. So if you want to sell a sponsorship for the trip, um, I've got some paperwork that I can get to you. Uh, anybody who wants to donate, we'll put their logo on our website. We'll put their logo on our t-shirt. Um, we can give them some other benefits if they donate. So, you know, another way students often fundraise for the trip, they run out, they get some sponsors, and that is another way to pay for the trip. Um, Close up has recommended, they call it the 40 by 40 campaign. Find 40 people to give you $40, which is not that much. Aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, whatever. Um, that's another way to pay for the trip. Get a good chunk of the trip paid for uh, pretty quickly. Uh, of course, fundraisers in and of themselves. And, and I think uh, one of the, the easier things that you can do that's been very successful for students in the past, uh, organizing bottle and can drives. Either go to a college football game and collect the cans from the tailgates uh, or just walk around your neighborhood, hand out flyers and ask people, uh, you know, tell them you're going to come back in a week and collect the bottles and cans and you can get the money that way. Um, we had one girl, she went on the trip last year. She paid for her entire trip because she went out and she asked a bunch of people for cans. Her mom and dad did, uh, aunts and uncles, everybody was putting the feeler out for, for returnable cans. Um, now she had to work for it. She had to go collect all the cans and she had to take them to the store and cash them in. Um, but she literally paid for her entire trip by collecting pop cans. I mean, it is a great way to pay for uh, your trip. There are plenty of other fundraisers that are listed on our fundraising page. I'm not going to read them all to you, but if you're interested in running any of them, um, let me know and we can, we can see if we can work together to coordinate. All right. So the question everybody wants to know is, how do I register for the trip? Um, I know it's going to seem kind of complicated. It's really not as complicated as sometimes it sounds, um, but I do have a step-by-step -step process put together. I'm going to put that in the chat. So step number one is you've got to fill out the form saying that you're going on the trip. Um, so we have a close-up registration form. Um, I'm going to put the enrollment form in the chat as well. Uh, so you're going to fill out the Google form. Um, this, is, this is just all your contact information, everything that we need to tell close-up, everything the school needs to know about you for the trip. Uh, that form needs to be filled out by the end of the day on Tuesday, September 26, 2023. 
Um, so that gives you about a week and a half, almost two weeks to, to fill out the form. So once you fill out the Google form, that's saying, hey, I want to go on the trip. Here's my information. Step number two is there is a deposit that is due on that same day. So uh, we need a $500 deposit. Uh, the check should be uh, payable to the Close-Up Foundation. And you're going to bring that to me in Canton Room 243, or you can give it to Miss Bennett in Plymouth. What room are you? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. I'm room oh, one no third. I'm I'm room number one thirteen in A pod. Okay, one thirteen A in Plymouth. Uh, to 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 Miss Bennett. Um, I'll just pick them up from her on on the twenty sixth. So by the twenty sixth, you need a five hundred dollar non refundable check payable to the Close Up Foundation. Um, in the memo line, just write your student's name, especially if they have a different last name than you. That way, we know where the money is going and where it's coming from. Um, so you're going to fill that out and you're going to bring that to myself or Ms. Bennett. Um, also, you're going to fill out the field trip consent form. And you'll find that on the Google form when you fill it out. There's a link to it. Um, just print that out, fill it out. You're going to bring that and turn that into us. So those things are due by the 26th. So you're filling out the Google form, the field trip form, which is on the Google form, and a $500 check. That gets you registered for the trip. That is the first payment. Uh then step number three, uh, usually probably the 27th, 28th, a couple days later, uh, I'm going to go through, I'm going to put everybody's email into a massive email list. I'm going to register you with the Close Up Foundation. I'm going to enter your information into their website, and then I'm going to send you registration information from there. Um, so you'll get the information on how to sign into your Close Up account. We'll need you to sign in, fill out the information that they want, including you're going to make up a username and password. Um, We'll send that sometime late September, uh, and we'll need that filled out by Tuesday, October 3rd. Uh, step number four, um, on Tuesday, October 3rd, or maybe even sooner, I'm going to send you an email that's titled Close Up Participant Test List. This is just to make sure that everybody's email address is working okay. You're getting the emails from the trip. Um, don't want anybody to get left out if you know an email address gets mistyped or something. So we're going to send out the test email. All I'm going to ask you to do is respond and say, got it. Tell me what your name is. Um, once we confirm everybody's email, we'll be good to go. We'll know that the, the list works. If you do not get the test email list, the close up participant test list email uh, by Tuesday, October 3rd, uh, send me an email and just let me know that you didn't get that. And we'll look into getting that updated and fixed. Step number five, I know th th there's a lot of steps. Step number five, uh, the second deposit is due. That's $500. Uh, check payable to the Close Up Foundation by Thursday, October 19th. And then the remainder of the trip funds uh, will need to be paid by Thursday, November 16th. Um, so for most people, this will be $982 to Close Up. Uh, and then the rest of the money will be payable to PCCS. That'll be the PCEP trip fee. Um, I won't know what that is until everybody signed up. Again, we're estimating about $150. I think last year we got it down to like 50 or 60. It wasn't, it wasn't too much last year. Um, but again, the more people go on the trip, the, the cheaper it is. Um, so that will be the final payment process. Uh, I will say that if you want to go on the trip and this timeline doesn't work for you. Um, so if you're going to need a little bit more time, um, as long as we know about it ahead of time, we can usually make an agreement with close up. We can usually work with their finance department and still make it happen. Um, the one thing that they are pretty insistent about is that the original, the $500 deposit is due by the first date. Um, that, that is kind of one of their, they start booking hotel rooms as soon as you sign up. So, uh, they need that deposit right away, but the rest of the trip, if this timeline between now and November doesn't work for you, um, just let me know and we can we can see what we can get worked out with close up. Um, the one thing that they will say is that uh, everybody has to be paid in full. I think it's like two weeks or three weeks before we go on the trip, no matter what. Um, one last thing about payment. Uh, if you qualify for a free or reduced lunch from the school, um, I know everybody gets free free lunch now, but if you qualified under the old program for free or reduced lunch, if if it's a low income earning household for whatever reason, um, send me an email. There is a financial aid scholarship that's available um, in any given year. Usually it's about $1,000 and usually we would divide it between everybody who qualifies. 
Um, so if it's one person who qualifies, they get the full thousand. If there's two people who qualify, each person gets 500. You get the idea. We'll just divide it up between everybody who qualifies. Um, we're working on another scholarship. I, I don't have it quite set up yet, um, but we might be able to get a scholarship of um, we're working on maybe 250 to 500 dollars. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to offer that one, but we're working on that as well. So, uh, again, if if money is going to be an issue, especially let me know and we'll see what we can do to work that out. Um, we are on social media. Uh, we've got an Instagram page if you want to see some pictures from years past. Uh, we also do the Remind 101 text messaging service. So um, once you sign up for the trip, the official thing that we'll do is we'll we'll use email. And I'll usually try whenever I can to also use the Remind 101 text messaging thing. Um, in the meantime, like if you want to sign up for it right now, uh, send a message to the number 81010. And the message should be at PCEPCU2024. Um, and that'll subscribe to the, the reminders and, and you'll get reminders about the trip from me. Um, other than that, that's that's everything that I've got for you. I, I just want to thank you for your time. Um, I know you just spent an hour hearing about the trip and learning about the trip. And I really, truly hope your students go on the trip. It is the coolest thing that they can do in four years of high school. They are going to have a blast. They're going to have a great time. Uh, if you've got questions, uh, Ms. Bennett and I are going to stick around. If not, uh, have a wonderful evening. And uh, we look forward to you to signing up for the trip. And if you got questions, just let us know. Have a wonderful evening. Any questions? Um, somebody asked in the chat, when do students pick roommates? Uh, we will do that um, usually about a month or two before we leave. Um, we usually have a, a meeting sometime in either early January, late December. It just kind of depends on, on a couple factors, but it's usually in early January. Um, the students will pick their roommates. So if they already know who they want to room with, I mean, it's just a matter of getting them signed up. Um, if they don't know anybody going on the trip and they're worried, I don't know anybody, um, we're, we're going to have that informational. We'll have a, a meeting for all the students going on the trip um, before before we leave again, usually like early January. And the students have an opportunity to meet people if they meet somebody there they want to room with. Um, you know, they can put the roommate there. If not, Miss Ben and I will go through anybody who has no preference for roommates. Um, and, and based on the students that we know, and we won't know everybody on the trip, but based on the students we know, um, we, we try to pick students who we think will be a good fit for each other, um, students who similar things in common and whatnot. Um, by then, at least the students who are in my class and her class will we'll know pretty well uh, about each other. And so we'll, we'll do our best to, to get them matched up with people that they can, um, that they can uh, meet up with. Uh, somebody asked for the Remind app number, so I'm going to come back to that. Uh, that's also on the PCEP close-up site, so um, you can find that there as well. But it's 81010 and at PCEPCU2024. And I'm going to one more time, I'm just going to throw it in the chat, the quick links to, oops, I don't know why I did that. Um, the quick links that will go to everything that we've done in the meeting today. You're welcome. Um, thanks for coming to the meeting. I appreciate that. Thanks for the thanks. Chris, I sent, you uh, I sent you something directly in chat when you get a chance. Yeah, I'm looking at um, a good standing with grades. Uh, we've never had an issue before with students who have had some issues. Um, but Well, we had one problem with one student once. And, and so this is where um, it gets kind of tricky. I'm not going to pull a discipline record for the student. Um you know, once it gets entered into the system, if an assistant principal comes to me and says, yeah, you might want to rethink this. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to take their advice to some extent. Um, but but as far as is behavior goes, um, we, we generally haven't had any issues on the trip except one. Um, we had one student who, who did go. Uh, he um, I'm going to be polite. He had some issues and um, he was the only student in the 18 years that I've been doing this. He got sent home from the trip um, and, and he didn't do anything terribly wrong. Uh, he was just rude to a couple adults. He he put his headphones on and refused to take them off. And, you know, we were willing to work with him and he he just didn't want to work with anybody. And so uh, 
uh, he made the choice to go home. I, I guess we didn't send him home. We we gave him the choice, uh, you know, just take the headphones off while, while we're doing the close-ups. So you put them on after, um, and, and he decided not to. Um, so he, he was the one student who got sent home. He was the one discipline issue that we had on the trip. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think this is a great trip for, you know, students who love government and history and have, you know, 4.0. It's a great trip for them. Looks great on a resume. Um, but we've we've taken plenty of students who uh, are not exactly uh, the highest students in their class. Um, you know, I had one student went a couple of years ago. He failed my class and he still went on the trip, had a great time, learned. And I think the second time around when he took government, he got like a B in the class. So, um, you know, the students sometimes learn from their mistakes. I took one student who was on probation once. I didn't know he was on probation until the probation officer called me. Um, you know, so that was an interesting conversation for us to have. But uh, even that one ended up working out OK. Um, I, I will say that people on probation are not the norm for the trip, but it happened once. And like I said, he was already signed up before I found out about it. Um, in the message, somebody asked, uh, do students get to meet each other before the trip? Yep. Um, we will meet at least once, maybe twice before the trip. Um, uh, twice before the trip, we'll get everybody together. Uh, we'll do a good get to know you thing. We'll talk about some of the things we're going to do. We'll kind of plan out our free day. Um, and we do some get to know you sessions just so uh, I think it's important that I know the students, Ms. Bennett knows the students, they knew us and they know each other. So, um, yeah, we'll get together before the trip and, and we'll get to, they'll get to meet each other. And we do um, a meeting with the students and the parents prior to oh, leaving yeah. for the trip. So we know what we have to pack, what we shouldn't pack, things we should avoid, like jewelry and that kind of thing. So I think, Chris, we do the first like the first introductory meeting with the students. And then I think that's when we do the photo. And then we bring them back again for some other activity. Um, and then we do the one with the parents. Yeah. So they've got a couple opportunities to meet each other. Um, the other thing I was thinking about, and I had this idea in the summer, I haven't run it by Ms. Bennett yet, um, is even not necessarily mandatory meetings, but for students who do want to meet a little bit more often and maybe just talk about current events or, you know, watch some movies related to Washington, D.C., like National Treasure, or um, there's some fantastic documentaries out there about some of the things that we're going to see. Um, I I'm thinking of maybe running those maybe, you know, once a month or something like that. Um, definitely optional, not something that students would have to come to, but if they wanted to, to meet other people on the trip, that'd be an opportunity as well. Sorry, I just sprung that at you without actually talking to you about it, but had the idea. Any other questions? Hi, my name is Shireen. I do have a question. Um, sure. Will this um, video be available after this meeting? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, is it recording? Can anybody see if it's recording? Is it? It is. It is recording. recording. Um, yes, I will find a way to get it put on on the website, and I will, I will email it out to everybody. If you signed up for the the sign in form, I will also try to put a link on the PCEP close up site. Um, so again, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the the sign in form up there and the quick links, um, and the PCEP close up site. Uh, I will find a way to process the video and I will get it up at some point in time, probably tomorrow or the day after. Um, usually those in videos, when they're an hour long, it'll take a while to process, um, but I'll, I'll try to get that up pretty soon. Um, also on the quick link site, I should have said this before, um, but I will send you a link to the presentation itself. Um, so there is the link to the presentation itself, the PowerPoint. And uh, that's also found on the on the main PCEP close-up site. So you can find the PowerPoint up there. Oops, I keep clicking the stuff. Chris, I had to um, process these recordings for my AP Gov review sessions in mm -hmm. the spring, so I can walk you through how to do it. I'm a I'm a tech idiot, so if I could figure okay. it out, <laughs> I can help I know you how to do it. it. <laughs> I did it the same thing. I did it. I did it in the spring. It just I know it takes a while because it's it's got to yes. like load and file, and then you got to download it. It and... can it can take quite a while to process it, but it is. It I, is I know when they're chilly. like two minutes, they're usually pretty quick, and then when they're an hour, it's like uh two days later, it's still processing. Yeah, yeah, it takes it takes a while. Awesome. Thank you for your help. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Any other questions?
Well, if there are no other questions, um, thank, thank you for you. a wonderful meeting. Thank you for uh, coming and listening to our, our presentation. And, and we hope your students go on the trip. Uh, if you've got any questions, let us know. Yeah, I'm, I'm double I'm double checking chat. I don't see anything that we've missed. I don't know if there's anything on your end. No, I just checked all the direct messages. I don't see anything. Okay. That I okay. I think, it, I think we got them all. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Have a wonderful evening.